Good afternoon, and welcome back, poetry lovers. It is I, ZM Wise, and here I am with another car recording, just for you. So, for this poetry vlog, I wanted to discuss world poetry. Ever since I was a child, I've always been interested in world mythology. Don't get me wrong, the uh, Greek and Roman classics are like no other, but the world has so much more to offer with its mythology, history, culture, music, the arts in general, and of course, poetry. And since I was a young lad, I've always derived more pleasure from uh, world poetry and world mythology rather than what the English-speaking world has to offer. And concerning English mythology, there wasn't really a universe created until Tolkien created Lord of the Rings. Isn't that something? I mean, go back a ways. Try your best to trace an ounce of English mythology. That's what you'll get, my friends. That's what you'll get. And what, so one of my favorites is, um, is the Dogon tribe. I believe they're, in, they're either in Central Africa or Western Africa. Read all about them. I don't want to give anything away. I don't want to spoil it. Um, read some of their myths. It's really something, especially the creation myths. It's, it's insane how the world was created in certain parts of the world. For some, it started out as paradise. For some, it started out as chaos. For some, it started out as nothing. For some, it started out as a gargantuan animal. God, I just, I just, oh, gosh. Sorry, total literary nerd right now. I really am. <laughs> Especially, and, and the same thing goes with uh, world music. Now, don't get me wrong. The guitar is a lovely sounding instrument. But growing up, I really found that even though it is an essential instrument to certain types of music, it's not all that. Yes, I said it. It's not all that. Uh, I could think of many more beautiful sounding instruments than the guitar. Two of my favorites are perhaps the koto from Japan and then the harp. Um, such such beautiful melodies are created from those instruments. I, uh, I, I just can't even fathom the sound. And um, yeah, so, and I noticed a pattern in certain uh, international poetry. I mean, depending on where they're from. I'm not making a gross generalization, but uh, just noticing certain patterns. Like, in, in Russian poetry, a lot of it's extremely political. Uh, a lot of Spanish poetry is, is fiery, is passionate, extremely. Um, certain poems from ancient China and Japan, certain Chinese dynasties, they're more serene, they're more tranquil. They have this, just this selfless aura about them. I can't even, I can barely describe it. Probably doing a miserable job doing it on camera right now. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So, what is your favorite uh, type of poetry? Do you, do you prefer international poetry or poetry from the English-speaking world? There is no right or wrong answer. There really isn't. Everyone has a preference. They really do. And don't get me wrong. I mean, I do love reading the English translations of poems, but I'm absolutely crazy about those bilingual editions. I was reading Catullus, uh, one of the most underrated Roman poets, and it came with a Latin translation. Um, and I started to learn some Latin words. So it's, it's quite wonderful. Even if the language is dead, like Latin, it's... It's still quite fun to uh, educate yourself, but, uh, yeah, so check out some world poetry, listen to some world music, look at, look at art from around the world, and uh, tell me what you think in the comments section. I'm interested to hear your thoughts. Poetry lives!